Welcome, everybody, to Soundheads. Welcome. First episode of Soundheads. Hi, my name's Tristan Todd. I'm Sophia Massad. This is Soundheads, where we get into the minds of the music industry. Shout out to Gilson at 33rd Street Studio. For letting us record the podcast here, helping us do the sound engineering for our podcast. He is seriously awesome. He has recorded all of my vocals for our upcoming album. And his he's mixes. Like, his, he's his a mixes great sound so engineer. Good. Yes, he's mixing our whole album, so give it a listen. You will be jealous. Come to 33rd Street. Seriously, thank you so much, 33rd Street. We love you. This week, we'll be talking to each other and kind of introducing ourselves and letting you guys know what we're all about and what we do in the music industry. Let's start with how we met. Yeah. What year was it? 2017? Around 2017, I think. Okay. Yeah, I had just finished my associates, I think, at ACM. And I was only had like a couple years left in college, I think, at the time. Nice. So. I was still at ACM, and that's when I posted a little Facebook status looking for a guitarist to start mm -hmm. a band mm -hmm. and through someone I don't even th know if we were Facebook friends maybe like just through going to the same music school I think school. so I, I think I knew I somehow heard about you from a couple other musicians that I was like talking to at the time but they had recommended that I go check out the so help me's which is mm. like kind of what made me go and like search you in nice. particular yeah and then i saw that you were in need of a guitarist and that's when i like reached out and was like hey i'm bored right now <laughs> um nice i only have a couple like school and playing in one band yeah and obviously i need to take on more right that's and not enough. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's when i reached out and uh asked if if you needed a guitarist and i remember going to your house that was over there off of like lincoln or yeah, something yeah over like super super small ghetto. i don't even know if it was necessarily <laughs> ghetto no it, it was, was. Just, like this super small house over by the Capitol, and i was like Thank where you. i at first whenever you sent me the address for it i was like she's gonna murder me out here yeah i i don't know where <laughs> i'm going but she's just gonna take me out here and she, she posted a fake address and i'm gonna get kidnapped or something <laughs> But I ended up yeah. showing up, and yeah, it was really cool. I, I, I don't know if I did anything necessarily to impress you because I felt like I was such a bad guitarist. That was no. like five years ago now. Like, yeah. I feel like I've gotten so much better in the last five, six years. And Totally. No, yeah. I remember you coming in and just kind of, I like showed you a song maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember what song it was. Well, I, I remember you showed me Mama Says. Yeah. And then I think you also showed me a part of Come Back Home, but it was like a super, super like yeah. rough version where it was like piano, like eighth right. notes where it was like ding, 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 yeah. or something. Or maybe like, I played it for you. Like I something like a... super like manic almost. Yes. And I was like. I dig it. Okay. Yeah. You were like, cool, this girl's manic. I like it. <laughs> dig the vibe. <laughs> I just remember you like started to play my music and you were like, yeah, I like the Alabama Shakes. And I was like, cool, then this will work. Awesome. <laughs> like you listen yeah. to the Shakes. Mm -hmm. I want to be them. So yep. yeah. And I remember like a couple other guitarists came and went and I was like, nah. Oh, Tristan's sweet. the guy. Yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. I'm glad my music taste. I, I um, picked you. No, you did. I mean, you did, did a really good did little great. audition. I was trying to be really like professional. I was what? I got the vibe. 19. Were, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, all right, guitarist audition. Well, and I, was, I kind of had auditions. I was kind of intimidated at the time because like I said, I good. just knew you really from the So Help Me's. <laughs> And so Helmings were bigger than PAX at the time. Yeah. Like, just way, way bigger. Like, you guys probably had, like, three, four times the following that PAX even, like, could muster. Yeah. And I was just so intimidated. I was like, oh, this, this, she's going to think I'm <laughs> absolutely garbage. She's playing with these, like, popular musicians. And yeah. so I was, like, really intimidated at the time. But no, it worked here out. Here we are now. Well, and that's kind of how I joined the Self Help Me's was I was in Morning Fox, my mm, yeah. first band that I started and it was a disaster and then they had like an open call for singers and I had been singing in a bunch of cover bands mm. and so someone that I was in a cover band with told me to go like audition for them and they like sent me songs to memorize the harmonies to which I thought was super like intimidating and like yeah. I spent a long time practicing and I like went in and auditioned and they picked me and then I sang with them and played keys with them for I think like three or four years wow for a while yeah and you were like, young too yeah i think i was like 17 or 18 when i joined wow. them yeah but we had a lot of fun we did a really like, cool. little tour and stuff yeah and then i started writing music that didn't really fit their genre like because the... they're kind of like a i mean i've only heard heard like some of the stuff you showed me and then stuff like way back then it yeah. was like more of like a dream rock pop kind yeah, of yeah kind, kind of like 
dream math rock is what we did yeah so it was like way different than my genre i guess yeah Yeah. yeah. because i'm just always trying to do like uh fleetwood mac simple kind of yeah i i I always classify you as like when people ask i i I say it's like an alternative southern indie rock kind of vibe is like that's good to know all the keywords that i throw out there at the time because i mean we do the alabama shakes covers and and fleetwood mac covers and even amy winehouse i feel like to an extent has that alternative almost like that southern kind of swing to it yeah rock to it a little bit and so that's kind of yeah. just what i tell people that's what i like to t- i tell people that i like to tell people <laughs> that we're like the alabama shakes yeah. and amy winehouse absolutely that's what i'd like to be but how can how can you it's hard it's hard <laughs> it's hard so yeah i did morning fox i did so help me yeah, and yeah. then we came together and created me sophia Massive. the sophia Massive band or <laughs> sophia Massive or yeah. whatever band we're feeling at the at the yeah. time well and then we had just kind of like session drummers and bassists for yeah. so long i remember going through a lot we went through what three or four bases before yeah. we ended up with our our current bassist. Yeah, now we got Levi. He's Levi, awesome. Yeah. He played on the whole album, did a fantastic job. Shout Actually out to knocked the new, out new Sophia Massett album yeah. coming out. Yeah, coming out soon. <laughs> uh, yeah, Levi knocked out the bass in one day, which kind of blew mm-hmm. my mind. But I guess you did the same with guitar. Kind of. And I, Michael did the we, same with I drums. I had to do like a couple touch-ups but but yeah then we got michael and they're both yeah. awesome i remember going through a lot of uh a different lot of drummers. drummers too yeah wow. yeah we had a couple of drummers for like six months and then mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. finally like found someone who wants to grow with us and i yeah. feel like that's the hardest part of starting a band or like yeah. finding people to play with you is like finding it, people who love the vision and like want to grow with you and can like deal with the hard times and not being abs- big it, it, there's a lot of like different points to that because everybody's trying i mean Music in itself is like an artistic expression, and there's so much ego, and and it's it's not necessarily a bad ego, but it's just yeah. like an ego with you know every artist, whether you're in film or you know doing visual art or even music. That I feel like at some point to be like at a professional level, you kind of have to overcome or like break down yeah. this ego a little bit to right. like be open to those new ideas and be open to like collaborations and creativity, yeah. and and it just makes you I think a better artist all around at that point. But totally. it's hard to find people that have, like, gone through that particular, like, yeah. moment where they can, like, break that ego a little bit and then be open to, like, I don't know, more kind expression, of, I guess. Yeah, and, like, understanding that nobody is an overnight success. Mm-hmm. Like, you kind of have to work your butt off before you even get anywhere, like, remotely noticed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and kind of, like, toughing it out through that. Yeah. But I feel like we put together a pretty good group of people. I definitely like everybody yeah. that's that we're playing with now. Big moves. I'm really excited for some of our upcoming performances and stuff, and even, like, yeah. the newer material we've been working on. Yeah, we got some Very new nice. stuff. New stuff in the works. Uh, yeah, so tell us about you. Like, start from the beginning. The beginning? First time you touched a guitar. So I had begged for, like, I think two years straight, mm-hmm. um, my parents for an instrument specifically a guitar but i had tried violin for like a year and a half i played violin That's for like cool. a year I played and a half violin really for like four years i hated it i hated it well <laughs> and there's a funny story behind that so my now drummer for pax mm-hmm. he was my like best friend back then too okay and he was in orchestra with me and we both played violin whoa and like in school like in school okay. together yeah cool and so he he ended up, which is the most drummer thing he could possibly do, ended up sitting on his violin and breaking it. Like, snapped the neck and everything. Just destroyed this violin. What? And so his parents were so mad that they wouldn't go and get him a new one. But they didn't take him out of orchestra either. So we're sitting here in our practices, and he's sitting right next to me without a, without his violin. And so we had to, like, switch back and forth. I would let him use mine. And we would do like one rehearsal where he plays like a couple songs and he'd switch it back to me. And then I'd play Hot Cross Buns or Mary Had a Little Lamb or whatever it was we were learning I at the time. I love Hot Cross Buns. So I think it's because we had to like share and it was such a like a weird experience that I just dropped it and I wanted to pick up a guitar again. And my parents like almost, re- they didn't refuse, but they were very apprehensive to buy me a guitar. And I begged and begged and begged. They thought it was just going to be another hobby that I picked up and was interested in for like a year and then and dropped Sat or whatever. On it. Or sit on my guitar yeah. and break it. <laughs> and so I finally got, got them to buy me like a $100 like yeah. Fender Stratocaster or whatever mm-hmm. at Guitar like a Target Center. Target guitar. Yeah. No. Mine well, was from Target. This is probably the same same one. It's like yeah. some cheap $100 
it came it was like a hundred dollars and it came with the guitar and amp a cable a i think it came with a guitar case too and yeah. so you get all this for a hundred the guitar itself is probably like fifty dollars right and so i ended up playing it for a long time and got really really into it and took lessons at mon studios eventually just like took off with it i ended up learning like zeppelin and beatles and Jimi hendrix and all sorts of stuff back then and i'll always remember like the only way that i i remember myself getting better because i was struggled for like a really long time to get past this like threshold that i had and i just made it an a point to learn an entire black keys album all on guitar Dang. and I, I i remember it's the rubber factory album so if you if you know what the Rubber Factory <laughs> album is, it's probably my favorite Black Keys album. But I learned that album like start to finish. Whoa. Like the entire. How old were you? I was maybe 14, 15 what? at the time. And I just learned the entire album start Wild. to finish. I mean, it's not like a super complicated album. It was it was back before Dan Arbuck was a superstar and, and shredded like crazy. But I learned like that whole album start to finish. And I remember showing my guitar teacher and he was impressed. And that was when I first like finally was like. I, I could do this. Yeah. Like I could I could be a musician. Yeah, and, I could not do that. <laughs> and so then in high school I started my first band called which is super weird now to think about that sixteen year olds yeah. started a band, but we called ourselves Peyote Road. <laughs> and I don't know why. Tight. I like it. And we played our first show at a venue called McSalties, which was like a pizza place. McSalties? McSalties. That's and it was a cool like a pizza place. We were like sixteen. It was very like it was not a good venue and 16 year olds shouldn't have been there right and we had a bunch of people show up and it was really cool and we That's only awesome. played like five songs i think nice. like total it wasn't even like a full set and that was our first show was peyote road and then uh we introduced another guy who played saxophone for us and then we renamed ourselves the humans but we spelled it like hue like the color like h-u-e oh men's nice and so we played like I think two shows, Man. which I, we can get into when we talk about our worst shows ever. Um, <laughs> but we played a couple shows, and then after we all got into college, we lost our bass player, and then picked up our current bass player, which Dang. Mitchell Covey, and that's when we started PAX. Nice. And I started going to ACM, and really we didn't do a whole lot. We we practiced a lot and tried to like just learn a bunch of as much as we could, and at that time, and then I think like two three years into college is when I reached out to you, and then we started started like our little group and and played yeah. for for years and then this last i guess four months now three two three months oh gosh i don't even remember <laughs> four four I'd to say four four to two months i that's when i joined dinosaur boyfriend and nice. i've been going going with them and yeah still with me and still with you still in my band. Uh, absolutely <laughs> absolutely still doing the pax thing yeah yep and so s still doing all all three bands and just trying to make it my full-time job now and then yeah. teaching lessons um guitar lessons and music lessons on the side but yeah that's, that's awesome. my music journey yeah. my career you can start from the very beginning did you go to acm right out of high school yep right out of high okay. school so we both went to acm it's the academy of contemporary music mm -hmm. here in oklahoma and i guess that's kind of how we met mm -hmm. through people mm -hmm. which is really cool like networking that's, that's the biggest thing about music school for me like the biggest thing i got out of it was just the people that i met absolutely like i literally joined two or three cover bands where i'd play at weddings and events and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff just because i went there and like i was open to doing whatever yeah <laughs> which is kind of like yeah i think one of the biggest things for like starting musicians is just being open to you know seeing those taylor swift songs speaking of <laughs> did i was i in that wedding group before or after joining in your band do you remember me being in a wedding band i don't know i can't it what? was around the same time because i was trying mm. like a bunch of different projects and i okay. don't remember it was with jason scott nice but i did that for a while like That's three cool. months or something had to learn all these yeah. wedding songs like I, I think i had to add like 30 40 songs of yeah just wedding songs that i had to learn yeah i had to learn a of, handful like, of songs like yeah a... so so start from the beginning your musical journey into your i guess professional career as yeah. you were now so like from the beginning beginning i remember um when i was like eight or nine i was singing shakira or like it was the shakira beyonce song mm -hmm. i was singing it in my kitchen and my parents were like dang this girl can sing okay. and so i like kept practicing and like i would just karaoke in my room constantly like that's all all I did was karaoke. I had nice. my laptop. Like I would YouTube these karaoke's. Uh, 
and so whenever I was 12, my mom got me into vocal lessons, mm-hmm. which is really cool. I got to learn like speech level singing, which is really cool. And I won't go into that, but I'm really passionate about it. Speech uh, level singing? <laughs> speech level singing. It's basically what? making singing as easy as talking. Oh, um, that's really cool. I've never heard that before. I don't know why I've never heard that oh, before. Oh, well, you should learn. I need to learn that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool. Uh, look it up. It's how I sing, and it makes it really easy to play like... You know, I've done like six hours of shows in one day and it doesn't like my voice doesn't get tired, which is really cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So I started training when I was 12 and I started just playing at like the Rodeo Opry in the stockyards. And that was really cool, except for they always wanted me to do country music. And I remember Mallory Eagle was there a lot. And I was like, this girl is who I want to (laughs) be. Like I always looked up to her. She's awesome. She's so sweet. Yeah. Shout out to Mallory Eagle. Shout out Mallory. (laughs) Yeah. So I did that for a long time and I remember just hustling and like every weekend I would go play these shows there and like even as a kid I was just like I would play two songs and do an outfit change in between like I was nice. trying my hardest yeah, that's a lot yeah and so then I actually moved to Georgia for a while stopped doing music for like six months decided that was not me I have to do music and then I moved back and started doing vocal coaching. That's when I started at ACM. And I had already gone to OU for a year or so doing opera, but that was also not me. <laughs> but Dang. fun, cool to yeah, learn I, opera. That's, that's so cool. Yeah, absolutely. You gotta get those classics. Yes, the so. Cl- literally the classics. Right. And I like have my OU opera audition songs in my head all the time. Really? Like they're just stuck there forever, the opera. Oh, but it man. was fun and it's like cool to learn different techniques as mm-hmm. well because I don't sing classically. So I got to learn that, which was cool. Um, and I do add that in every now and then just for like different textures. Yeah, I, I, I notice it every now and yeah, then. Yeah, yeah, it gets kind of weird. I remember you used to do like some opera singing as like a warm up yeah. sometimes. Yeah. yeah, that's the way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so then I started going to ACM and that's when I like got into, I think it was my first semester. I remember like getting out of band class one day Mm. and someone was like, join our cover band this weekend. And I was like, tight, let's do it. And so I joined a cover band and then I started finally like getting some recognition for my voice. And I was like, tight. So I started doing cover bands. I started vocal coaching like as Mm. my full-time job. And then I started my own band called Morning Fox. And that was kind of... It was a learning experience for sure. Like I found all these guys that I had been in bands with at ACM and I was like, let's do like a folk band. But it turned into like a pop punk band just because they all loved pop punk. Well, I remember meeting a couple of the guys that were in it and they went hard. (laughs) Yeah, they went hard. Way too hard for a folk band. Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. And that was a huge learning experience for me too. Like almost just asking and kind of telling people Mm -hmm. like what I want out of my own songs. Because I would be like, hey, here's a song I wrote. And they'd be like, let's go hard. And I'd be like, wait, that's not it. But, like, I didn't know that I had the say to tell them what to do, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Like, I didn't know how to be a band leader, which I feel like is a huge thing. Like, it's so hard to, like, put the band leader shoes on mm. and, like, tell your friends, hey, play something different. It's you kind know? of that, that ego part, too. Like, like what yeah. we were talking about earlier is, like, having yeah. to find somebody that's, like, broken that down a little right. bit and open themselves up to yeah. that type yeah. of environment, and I And, like, guess. that's something I appreciate about you being in my band mm. a lot is, like, I'll say, hey, here's the song, play something. And you'll be like, well, is this what you want? which is like something I need to hear because I'm bad at telling you what I want so I really appreciate that kind of stuff and that's like I really grew as a band leader in that band that I was in Morning Fox and then we were like let's not do this anymore I joined the So Help Me's and that was like a band that was already like fully established and I was just like coming in to replace someone Mm. else Um, and that was really really cool kind of intimidating like I was so scared at my audition but it was fun and like really just I feel like the biggest part of joining a band that's established is like the confidence yeah you gotta just be like i am a part of I this i know now. what i'm doing i know exactly, what i'm doing yeah. yeah i practice my parts like three times a day every day even wow. if we didn't have anything going on because i was like i have to be solid yeah and that was a really fun experience and then while i was in the so help me is when i like started writing my own stuff and that's when i decided to have my own just project a, yeah exactly. yeah that's interesting i didn't know that i thought for some reason i thought morning fox was after the so help me's in your timeline honestly i couldn't tell you i don't i I didn't know it uh, might be i I don't know (laughs) this is your story i don't know my story (laughs) i don't know the timeline i i didn't know that though but that's really that's really interesting yeah that's cool it was all like kind of messy just figuring it out because i was doing like this crazy dream math rock band with the so help me's and then like Mm -hmm. this pop punk band with morning fox yeah and i was like i don't know if i want to be either of these like 
I yeah, like Amy Winehouse yeah. and the Alabama Shakes and Fleetwood yeah. Mac. So that's when I was like, let's like, let me find a band and like bring my music to life. Like I finally realized that mm-hmm. I had something to offer because I had written all these songs that were different. And then I had really learned how to like be in a band from the So Help Me's, you know? Yeah. I mean, and especially band that level, I feel like whatever happens band drama wise within that band, once you get to a certain level, you just gain that a certain amount of professional ability, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Just because you have to at some point right. like yeah. be, be a more professional You got to like make it a business eventually. Yeah, yeah exactly. rather than just like hey, we're playing in a garage, mm-hmm. but we still do that. It's fine. Well, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, so that's kind of how I got here and yeah, we kind of had a downfall for about a year. We've kind of been I mean, COVID hit everybody yeah. hard to yeah. be fair. Whenever we were doing that play it loud mm. at the Grand Casino, right? Yeah. I remember that guy, he was, we ended up talking for a little bit about different statistics and like how hard COVID was hitting the music industry and everything. Mm -hmm. And he said something like 70% of the music, like the music industry itself, like live music, recorded music, sales, just everything was down like 70%. That's or wild. something like that. It's wild. It was like some crazy, I don't, don't quote me on it because I don't yeah. know the exact statistic, but it was something like astronomically yeah. like high that if any industry took that kind of hit, it would be like the end of that industry almost. Yeah. And the yeah. fact that the music industry took that kind of hit during the pandemic and during the, while, while right. everybody was quarantined is insane. Well, that was like a really cool time for like bedroom bands or mm-hmm. artists to like thrive. Mm-hmm. Like I remember finding Jacob Collier at that time. I don't know. If, have you ever listened to him? No, I haven't. Oh, he's so good. <laughs> Listen to Jacob Collier. He's awesome. He did like a tiny desk series, but he played every instrument and there was like oh. 15 of him in one room. Like in his bedroom. Wow. And the, that was the video of it. It was really cool. Cause That's he like, really cool, yeah. I don't know. Like there was so much experimentation happening at that time. And I ended up writing like, yeah, I would say over a hundred songs. songs. I started another project um, that you'll never know about. Yeah, and we'll keep it anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was a really um, interesting time for artists because I remember like right before the pandemic happened in February, Mm -hmm. I like made like 10 posters for shows that we were playing. Like I had to make a poster with all the shows we were playing because we had so much booked out and then everything was canceled. I remember, I mean, with between you and PAX, because I wasn't in DBF at the time, but between us two, I think I had Mm -hmm. 20 shows that just fell through Yeah, between... What Such was it, like time. April to all the way to like July or August or whatever? I yeah. had like 20, 25 shows or something between us wow. both that just... Yeah. Poof, Nothing. Gone. Yeah. And we did a couple like at home acoustic shows, didn't we? Mm-hmm. And yeah, like, I remember doing some live stream those acoustic shows. Those were so shows. weird. It was... So weird to like I play and nobody it, clapped. And it was like... I remember getting up early to do one too, where mm-hmm. I had, I was at your house at like 9 a.m. or like 10 a.m. Yeah. or something, and had coffee and was like barely awake and was like, mm-hmm. all right, let's do this live stream. <laughs> all right, let's play like a whole show. <laughs> yeah, weird stuff. But I'm excited for the future. We have a song coming out mm-hmm. on July 15th. Yeah, and well, uh, for all we know, it could be out right now as you're listening to this. So check out Lonely Head. Absolutely, it's on all streaming platforms, and it's a banger. If I do say it's so myself, so good. I'm really excited for this one. Absolutely, I, it's one of my favorite songs that you've written. So thank, thank yes. you, thank yes. you. Yes. Yeah, so we're gonna keep doing this podcast thing. We plan on having a bunch of different musicians, local musicians, touring musicians, uh, to come through, and we're gonna ask them a bunch of fun questions and get to know them. Um, I should stop saying um that's a really bad um, thing that i say uh, <laughs> it's okay like i've never taken a speech this is, class. this is our first episode we're getting the kinks <laughs> out and improving each time each time so join us every week stay tuned uh next week we're still pounding out who our next artist is going to be we have a couple in mind and follow us on instagram wow. and follow us on spotify and follow us on the podcast Absolutely. app because we will be on there and give us a follow if you want to get to know the music scene better and get some new music recommendations so. anyway thanks for tuning in keep your head in the sounds and we'll see you next week thanks <laughs> <laughs>